Based in Darlinghurst Jail, he travelled around the colony fulfilling his macabre duties, hanging condemned prisoners. In his first year, he assisted at two executions, the first in Darlinghurst, the second in Mudgee. Noting Bob's first execution in Dublin Jail occurred in May 1877, when he hanged Thomas Newman. Newman was convicted of sexual assault and brutal murder of a 12-year-old girl, Mary Ann McGregor. The evidence against him was irrefutable. Items of her clothing and jewellery, including pieces of her pink and blue hair ribbon, were found underneath his bed. He is the only executed person to be buried in the grounds of Dublin Jail, although no one knows where the grave is. Its location has passed into history. A small axe, or tomahawk, was used by Lars Peter Hansen, a Dane, to mutilate and kill Charles Drucker, otherwise known as the Little German. Nosy Bob dispatched Hansen on Dubbo Jail's gallows in 1890. Like Newman, Hansen had in his possession a number of Drucker's personal effects, including his revolver. The community was horrified by this execution. Indeed, by the trial itself, much of the evidence presented against Hansen was circumstantial, and Hansen's poor command of the English language severely hampered his defence. He protested his innocence to the very end. Harold Dutton Mallory was another of Nosy Bob's double executions. He was executed for the murder of his travelling companion, Jerome Casey. Casey's remains were found burning on a campfire just outside of Ningard. There were bloodstains and signs of a struggle around the campsite, and again, Malaloo was found in possession of his victim's property, this time a bloodstained towel. This is the Dubbo Jail Gallows. By the time Nosy Bob was appointed Chief Executioner, hanging was considered something of a precise art. Certainly the process involved a lot more than placing a noose around a person's neck and releasing the trapdoors. Nosy Bob and his assistant would travel to the jail a few days ahead of the execution and begin methodically planning the event. The hangman's tin trunk was sent from Darlinghurst Jail to Dubbo, ahead of the hangman. Nosy Bob would examine its contents, ensuring that the rope and other tools of his trade were in good working order. He would then establish the condemned person's height and weight in order to establish the length of the drop. The lighter the person, the longer the drop had to be. In order to dislocate the vertebra, severing the spinal cord, causing an instant loss of consciousness. Then, the important process of preparing the rope was undertaken. First, the rope was soaked in water and then stretched. The afternoon, before an execution, the noose was placed around the neck of a bag of sand approximating the condemned person's weight and left on the drop. The bag of sand was left overnight to stretch. Without stretching, the spring in the rope could cushion the drop and death would most likely be caused by strangulation rather than dislocation of the vertebra. The morning of the execution, a group of invited witnesses gathered in front of the gallows and a clergyman the condemned person's choice was also present. The governor of the jail, the sheriff, Nosy Bob, and his assistant entered the condemned cell. The hangman quickly pinned his arms behind his back and placed a white hood over his head, leaving the face flap open. Nosy Bob then quickly led the condemned to the gallows, followed by his assistant and the two officials. The condemned prisoner was instructed to stand on the chalk mark at the exact center of the drop. The assistant then speedily strapped the legs just above the ankles while the hangman covered the head with the hood. The noose was placed around the condemned prisoner's neck with the knot attached by a metal ring woven to the rope placed just under the left angle of the prisoner's jaw. Satisfied that nobody other than the condemned prisoner was standing on the drop, Nosy Bob moved quickly to the lever, removed the security pin and released the trapdoors. The body was left to hang for an hour, then released and a post-mortem performed.
Strikes by my window It's my chest right in the morning 